Guys, today we're doing some SWC 2021 commentary. Let's get this out of the way right now. It says that there are 25,000 viewers in chat. This seems to be going very slow for 25,000 viewers. I think some of you already know exactly what I'm going to say. Let's go take a look here in the stream chat. Let's, take, let's go take a look at some of the users. Okay, okay, okay. So far, yep, this definitely looks like... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's definitely 25,000. That's 25,000 viewers for sure. For sure, we just looked through 25,000 names. That's gotta be it. Four wins, one loss with Jameer. Very nice. Ooh! So that's where you get good runes. Oh, jeez. That's what we want to see. Jeez. That's how you get the good runes. I love that he's picking Jameer, man. I just wanted to win because he's picking Jameer. And he's picking Jameer, so he probably will win. Of course he's getting banned because Jameer is OP. Super OP. I just see Big V winning this. Two stun. Okay, Wind Monkey King stun as well. He's got a full attack age anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. How much additional damage an artifact takes that out? That means the Nana stacks twice. We knew Big V was going to win. And then Gianna comes back Gianna's anyway. Back. Does this kill? Does this does not kill? Carnal is the safer play. Needs the stack to rotate, but he's not afraid of it. Gets the extra turn though. Wow, Nana is good. <laughs> Hold on, are you telling me that Nana and Gianna are both very good? That's crazy. That's a crazy to think. And Big V wins. Wow, that's we didn't predict that several times. Man, they look so happy. See, this is this is the joy of, of playing Summoner's War in 2021. How happy they look. Oh, no, no, he's happy in that one. He's, he was probably not playing RTA while he was uh, while he took the picture. That's what it was. As soon as he's playing RTA, no more happiness. I love how they just... Comtois allows people to tell each other to kill themselves in chat and doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the Comtois employees really care. 25k viewers, no one in chat. Yep, kind of uh, kind of funny how that works. Oh my god, is that a Lisa? Is that something Oh Jesus Christ! What are they? This is gonna be a one-one game, guys. Lisa versus Gianna. That is not the that is not a a, 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 a different thing than we've seen before. So we know that Gianna is going through. <laughs> and Nana again. Of of course. They only have one sustain with the uh, the boost. I don't think he really needed to ban the Nana. I think he got scared from the, the, the first Nana. Nana's been performing very well today, but I don't think he necessarily needed to ban that. Yeah, I've been saying Jamir is good. I mean Jamir. Why am I saying Jamir now? I've been saying Jamir is good. Did I not say Jamir is good? Did I not clickbait en that enough? I should have clickbaited more, guys. See, this is this is what Once in Love is teaching me is I need to clickbait more about how OP Jamir is. Sorry, Jamir. He gets three glances. That was uh, pretty significant, though. Yeah, I've been saying Jam I've been saying Jamir is good. I have been saying it. 39 accuracy. What am I gonna do? This loves to triple quadruple roll. What am I gonna do with this 39 accuracy? We knew that Big D was better. Not to disrespect anyone else. We, we just knew that Big D was a very, very strong player. I mean, any, anyone in this match is gonna be, anyone in this competition is gonna be very strong as a player. Have a very strong box and have a lot of experience behind them. This is why this game is never gonna be legit and competitive. I mean, we've been... Esport. It's not an. It was never an esport. It was never an esport. And a Molly. Molly has not been performing very well without a very high success rate. She's very RNG. Everything is RNG, but that just means that the um, the Diana is getting let through, and Rika's probably going to get banned. The Molly can be can be strong based on RNG. I love how Come to Us didn't even care about that. They're like, sponsored by Google Play. By the way, if you're on iOS, screw you. We don't care about anyone on iOS. Screw you. By the way, also, link all of your socials, YouTube, everything with Come to Us. They want access to all your information if you want any uh, any Elias skins. It's not worth the Elias skin. I'm not even going to do it. It's not even worth the Elias skin. Lisa's been used against Gianna before, though. It's not the first time Lisa's been used against Gianna. That just meant that the Gianna was going through. Uh, they had two cleanses. They, they Lisa Jameer, so they couldn't afford to let the Gianna through without worrying too much about anything. <laughs> raw Dragon Dong. We'll edit that part out. We saying Raw Dragon Dong. We'll just edit that part out.
He beat a Fighter 3 player. So we're, but we're me and Pinkward, we're at the same skill level. We, I could be Fighter 3 players. I think that Calm to us actually like asks these players to talk smack on purpose to make it more exciting and more interesting. I don't think that they're actually like, well, Pinkward might be talking smack just because he wants to, but I think that the rest of them may be like, you know, in like comes just like no, 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 talk smack. We want to make it uh, very exciting. So don't think that that uh, not all of them are you know trash talkers. Normally, Pinkward might be the exception, but you know, he's gonna beat every opponent. No, he's just supposed to win matches. Pinkward, you're supposed to just win matches. You're not supposed to like Juno. Juno! Of course, Juno. In Tari's Bambit, he still does have uh, the opportunity to, number one, cut in with a ragdoll passive uh, anytime the Diana goes crazy. And then also, uh, he's got two glancing, so he's got the Ganymede glancing, and then he has the Shung Pung skill to uh, strip into the glancing. He doesn't have to worry as much about the Diana. Pinkway's at a disadvantage based on just his box. He's gonna skill. Uh, so he actually goes for it. Do we see a pick right? How much damage do you have? But it's not enough to take it out, but it is enough to take the next turn. If he needs to get a stun, no here's second. the initial turn, no initial turn, coming out here. Looking for a two turn sleep. Even if he kills the Diana, Diana it's coming back. But we do have that third skill that was reventilated back onto Chung Fung, Chung Fung. And an additional turn. And he lands the defense break and the glancing. And he does not land, ooh. That was... Mm. All RNG. RNG could have gone one way, RNG could have gone another way. Does he get the debuffs? Does he not get the debuffs? Does Ragdoll quit? Does Ragdoll not quit? So now at this point, uh, it was looking actually very good for second baby, but now at this point, it's just, no. Nana is just winning everything uh, today. Being, just, be, just by being on the battlefield. It's still, it doesn't really matter at this point. Like, Diana's just gonna come back twice with over half HP. She's gonna snipe, uh, yeah, she's just gonna snipe the Ganymede, and then she's gonna have another stack, so the stacks are gonna be back to two, so it really doesn't matter at that point. There's just so much momentum on Pinkoid's side. I like how there's 25,000 people watching, but there's, like, 15 people chatting, maybe, that might be stretching it. But we already know this. We already, this is the same thing. This is, like, if you, if you guys want to know how this works, just go, uh, Google Fet Extra Life. Uh, view, uh, Twitch view botting or something like that. I wonder if that gets banned. It looks like uh, it looks like Diana might get banned actually. Pinkoid is is really good at picking units that other people don't realize are good, and then being like, oh crap, I just now realized after he picked it that wow, it's an amazing unit. So you see these units uh, usually not very high on the tier lists, but being used in the right situation can be extremely effective. And I think Pinkoid is great at actually giving these units the respect that they deserve. That's why he has a crazy high win rate. And that's why he will most likely advance very far here. Uh, potentially even win the whole thing. And it's not even gonna be it's not even gonna be a Luxac win. Wait, wait, it could, wait, wait, it could be a Luxac win. It could be a Luxac win, but it does not have to be a Luxac win. He could just win by his skill. If he gets unlucky, he can still win by skill. I mean, I would have gone a little bit differently on the first turn. I would have stole half of that uh, Diana's HP with uh, Bulwark, but I'm sure he has another. Uh, wow, that seems fair. Wow. Okay. He could, he could, he could still come back from this. Additional turn, which is exactly what he needed. I mean, that's exactly what a lot of people need. But, uh, a lot of turn cycling. CR gets another turn, goes for Triana, goes for skill one on Diana. Of course. And then welcome back. I'm gonna go for skill one on Triana. I'm gonna go for, uh... But then that stacks the Bulwark as well. So Bulwark's going to have four. And then we're going to go for... Uh, oh my god! Seriously. CR needs to proc here. Gets a revenge. Defense break sitting on top of the field. The Diana cannot revive back here. But is the Triana's pass? Pink right praying for the bomb. You can see him there praying for the bomb and he gets it. This could be the game. That Vertiheal and Ciara is such a toxic combination if they cycle because Vertiheal's got 40% attack age, 20% uh, every time he crits. Is that enough? Pinkward's got insane runes, so Ciara should uh, be able to survive, you know, a decent amount. But. The issue here is that there's nothing stacking the Bulwark. I think he might just go for skill one at Ciara. I think that was I think that was bad. I think that was the uh, 
I think it was a bad play. I think he should have tried to go for the skill one on Ciara. Now he's gonna heal up. I think he should have tried to kill Ciara. Wait, this Triana, man. Oh my god. This is a great uh, turn cycle combo. Exactly. Of just like Ciara, every time she crits with skill one, uh, increasing attack gauge by 15%, and then the vertical uh, increasing attack gauge another 20% every time it crits. That's 85%. That's a lot of turn cycling for Ciara. So Ciara can just pop off and go crazy. There was two immunities from the uh, opponent's side, but all you have to do is look for an opening. Fix the vertiheal, of course. So two resets, and then fix the vertiheal for turn cycling. And he only has one strip. So that's something to keep in mind. He only has this young point strip. Pink Red wins this again. Antares doesn't even need to go that crazy before they even got a turn. 4v3 before he even got a turn. It's tough to go up against Pink Roy. The guy went 30-0. I don't, I don't know of anyone else that went 30-0 in, uh, in ladder play. It's, it's not that second baby is... Uh, I mean, he could be getting uh, getting tilted and like mispicking, like drafting uh, not as good as he usually is. But just going up against uh, going up against Pinkroid for anyone is going to be a massive challenge because his win rate is so high and he's got so many units built so efficiently. I'm I'm not surprised that Pinkroid. Just look at his win rate. Look at his win rate on ladder. Look at his win rate in the rest of the tournament. I'm not surprised at all that he's that he's doing this well. Because this is already over. This is this is already over. It doesn't even matter. Not surprised. I am. Look how surprised I am. Not the least bit surprised. I don't think this is wait, wait, wait. This is gonna be the number one match. So the final match is not gonna be. So we don't need to watch anything else after this. This is the number one match. We don't have to. We don't have to watch anything after this. Okay. Good. Good to know. Good to know. It's either gonna be Diligent or Pinkroid. I'm calling it now. They have the best win rates though. The, it's it's for a reason. It, the whole day is just three zeros. I feel like this is going to be a very fast competition if we just keep getting three zeros. I feel like Savannah. I feel like Savannah's the thing. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why he went for Wusa as the last pick. There's three strippers on the other side. Why would he go for Wusa as the last pick? Oh, here it is. Not looking good for diligent deep. Defense breaks on everyone. TC's on two. See, here's the thing. I feel like Diligent banned. I, 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 I don't, I don't understand why he banned the. Um, I, I would have banned Savannah because he already had enough strips. He didn't have to worry about the strips unless he was more worried about the silences than anything else. Honestly, I, I feel like Savannah was the ban. I feel like if he just banned Savannah, this would have been a very different match. I think diligent. Uh, I think diligent pick man drum. That's kind of clever. The double will Sima. Uh, kind of counters the fire lage. Kind of counters the dark um, horse as well. Yeah, Juno, we knew we knew Juno was coming out. That's not a that's not a shock. And a pra. Okay, that one is a shock. I'm a little surprised to see the Praha there. Bans the Leona. Bans the Savannah. Good. That's what I said. He should ban the other time. Because without the Savannah, he does not have... He still has additional damage and artifact. Um, but he does not have a large source of damage. That Juno can go crazy. The Oracles can turn cycle. Um, there's going to be a lot of turns on that team. The Silences is only going to do so much. This is Diligent's got this at this point. He banned out the, the biggest source of damage. He still does have damage from the Carnal. But those Oracles are going to cycle so much. Even even if Cornell does a provoke with skill one in the oracles, they're still going to turn cycle. Especially like, uh, well, especially if they have high crit rate. All of them are going to have high crit rate. This is just this is already diligence game. We just got to play it out. But this is already, in in my opinion, this is already dil uh, diligence game. Does he go for Danny to try to get that? Oh, he doesn't have a. He it, it's not on the spare. It's not on the spare. He wouldn't go for the Emperor because he wants to get those uh, those buffs up. Actually, and then he's gonna go for skill three. Yeah, this was just eventually just waiting for an opening. Does he proc? Does he violent proc? He does not violent proc. So they do still get those turns denied. 
Gianna's got a lot more. Well, I was going to say Gianna's got a lot more cooldowns, but, uh, or turns to go before she gets her cooldown off, but the uh, skill two cycles into uh, more additional turns. That, that four turns uh, on the cooldown for Gianna's third skill is really not that crazy. He's just going to go for skill one on the uh, Ember. No, he goes for an AoE. He gets two stuns, though. That's the Juno. Count? Oh, that was a huge counter. He didn't even need that. He got it, but he didn't even need that. Holy ground. And then he can Ganymede uh, Ventilate onto... He's going to Ganymede Ventilate onto the Poseidon. I mean, and not, not the Poseidon, the Pontos. He can't silence or cool... Uh, he can't silence the Juno, so... Or glance or whatever, the Juno. Debuff the Juno of any kind uh, without her cleansing it anyway. So the best he can do is just try to keep the attack gauge decreased on that. One more turn, he's got to go for the Provoke onto Gianna. He did not get the Provoke onto Gianna, so he's going to go skill 1 to Carnal, and then he's going to go for the skill 3. Does he... Well, actually, the Hey Gang's got the passive up, so it doesn't really even matter. So he just goes for skill 1. The enemy's got a while to go for his... This is a true whale comp! Skill 2? Oh, no, no, he... I mean, he could skill 2... But that's just gonna that's just gonna cleanse it off anyway. Same as what would have happened with the Gianna. Now he can. Um, next time Pontos gets the skill, it's just over. I don't even know why I'm saying like, oh, this and that and this and that. It's just over. He didn't even have to put the bomb on there. Um, it's just over. Which we knew. We knew. We knew Diligent was gonna win this. Not that. Uh, not that surprising. Who's surprised? Nobody's nobody surprised. All the number one seeds have taken care of business. The number one seeds took care of business? Wow, shocking. Shocking. I like Ismu, just the stats are against him. That's why I said he probably wouldn't move on, just because math. Why is he showing his fist? Is he going to fist stars? <laughs> yeah, guess who's going to get fisted? I would be very scared. If I was Tars, I'd be very scared that, that I, w I, would, I would watch out. Summoners, do you want to spend full price for <laughs> all the in-app purchases? Use Google Play! Google Play is like, please, we'll sponsor, please, use Google Play, please. Amazon is charging less for the same things we want our markup, we want our margins, guys, we want them. Please use Google Play, we want, we want our, all our margins. Why would I want to do that? Vertiheel. Vertiheel. Would be very strong. Vertiheel. And Juno, Juno's fantastic as well. Uh, anything that turn cycles, anything that increases his own attack age is- They picked- Ismu picked Vertiheel! Tars could've just picked Vertiheel. Ismu picks the Vertiheel combo. Okay, bans out the Vertiheel. He could've just picked it himself. So, I think Ismu is actually doing sm something smart here, is that he knows that, um, Tars is stronger in terms of, like, rune box, uh, and possibly experience. I don't know how much ex experience Ismu is when he started playing or whatever, but, um, kind of things that will increase your luck <laughs> like the um antares are very strong when you know someone is uh when you know you're outmatched so it's kind of a cheesy thing but and and over over time like the the more matches you go up against it um things like antares are not going to work throughout the course of many matches but if you're looking for just like a couple quick wins hope that rng is on your side uh, antares could be the answer right rng units Verta heal antares things that potentially could uh, do crazy stuff. He gets another turn. Ganymede? Yep. Two turns sleep. And another turn. Okay, goes for skill one. And Ganym actually does he. No, he doesn't. Gets another turn with the Antares. Well, actually, you know what? He did want to leech health with the uh, Antares. That's one of the reasons. Because uh, Tars was focusing on that. So, yeah. I think it was smart to pick Antares. I think it, it, it's smart picking these RNG units into someone that, like, outruns you and out-experiences you. He sported. I th like, that was... He knew. He knew he had to pick... Uh, he knew he had to pick some RNG unit. Guys, where's their bots? They're down to 9,600. Where'd the bots go? Where'd the robots go? Come to us. <laughs> the robots go. I mean, if he wins the whole tournament with Antares, uh, I'm gonna call some BS, but he knew he had to do something. He knew he had to luck sack somehow. Ban, uh, Carnal, uh, for Fire Bison, then ban, uh, ban Diana, okay. That's still Ganny Hathor, though. It's still, uh, pretty nasty. Does he cut, does he reset the Ganny Hathor? Or reset the Hathor, at least? He does not strip. Actually, he's probably gonna turn cycle here. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's not even gonna go for the step three. Ooh, and gets the, this, that was a lucky additional turn. 
reduced. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm kind of seeing where the the luck uh, the luck stat is actually legitimately coming into play here. It looks like he's just trying to pump damage into the water Ryu as much as possible. It's actually kind of surprising that he's got skill two already again. Wow. So this is still this is still winnable. This is still winnable right here. Ganning Hathor cycle, but they don't get the Shung Pung. They don't get the glance on Shung Pung either. Does he actually land this? Does he proc? Does he proc here with skill? Oh my God! He procs. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She's gonna land this. But not on Shung Pung. Not on Jungbung. This is still. I think Tar is still. Uh, okay. I think. Yeah. The Gany Hathor. As soon as Gany Hathor actually gets uh, gets in. So I mean, this could have gone either way. I personally would have played it a little bit differently, but it really doesn't matter how I would have played it. Hathor meta again. It's been Hathor's been picked though. Hathor's been picked. That's the thing. It's not even like Hathor. Hathor meta starting now. It's like Hathor's. If you've been playing the high level RTA. You notice that Gany Hathor has been being picked again. Or Hathor just in general is being picked again. Gany Hathor, Hathor as well. But Topa V has been doing it for a while as well. It's not not anything shocking. It was it was decent uh, decent at first though. But as soon as Gany Hathor gets going. It's surprising that Ismu did uh, a little bit better than uh, a lot of us expected at the beginning. But Gany Hathor is still very strong. I like how there's 10,000 people, 10, people watching and chat is just still. Chat is just standing completely still. Because that's, that's what happens in a 10,000 viewer chat. Is chat just stands completely still for like... 15, 30 seconds in 10,000 viewer chats. Exactly what happens. <laughs> it's just the same first match. Okay, Ismu is like, you know what? The first match I won, so I'm going to do the same thing again. But Tars already knows how to counter that first match. Can he please pick Vertiheel or a Juno? Vertiheel or Juno? Actually, you know what? I think Tian Lang was a, not a, not the greatest pick there. You have a lot of stuff that's already countering Tian Lang. Antares doesn't cycle... Uh, Antares doesn't give himself extra attack bar. Antares just steals turns. And then Shung Peng is already a counter to Tian Lang. So I don't think that Tian Lang was the best pick there. Maybe I'm being silly, but uh, I don't think Tian Lang was... As much as I love Tian Lang, I just don't think he was the correct pick there. Does he actually? He gets a lot of defense breaks. Gets a lot of damage. That's already game. That's that's already game. <laughs> it's already, they did a lot of damage though. Tars did a lot of damage so fast. There's a lot of people going for Water Striker very early on. I'm surprised that uh, I'm not surprised that he's he's seen some play. I'm just surprised that he is. I'm surprised that he's being picked so early on, especially when more people have started to learn how to counter him. That I, I kind of question if that is a great, uh, a great first pick situation. However, the people that are picking him are winning, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. So I want to note something though is that if you notice, a lot of people are picking Savannah at the very end, and that is the correct way to draft Savannah. If you pick Savannah too early, people can just play around her, uh, especially with things like Leo, things like Vertiheel. Let's see, let's see how much uh, Diana Carnal Luxac. Let's, let's see how many additional turns there are. So with Shushu, uh, anything that has full HP after the heal with skill three, he's got to go for skill one on Diana, and then go for skill two on Diana. Oh, gets resisted! Um, and then go for the AoE stun. But anything that has full HP, like she heals with uh, skill 3, and then anything that has full HP, uh, after that heal, gets immunity. If they don't have full HP, they don't get immunity. You don't really see it too much, but some people do actually, and that she has the third skill again. So that's the reason that she did that, uh, that bomb there, is to just cycle another turn. Of course, there was no, just for any early game players that are like, why should put a bomb on immunity? It's just the cycle turn, so you get another turn after that. So it goes for the damage onto the Gianna. If she cycles one more time, the Gianna is down. How lucky. Very lucky. Okay. There we go. That may right there just force it into another game. Oh, Oki cut and didn't kill. But skill one. Skill one Diana. Don't even. Yeah, skill one Diana. And gets a crit. And then gets the immunity on top of that. Okay, so that could have been that could have been another match. So this is still enough over here. They have enough sustain on both sides. It's it's kind of about the violent procs now, guys. I wonder if we just go skill two for the additional damage from the artifacts. So that is what he's doing. Okay. I don't know how many times I gotta say it's, it's all about RNG. If he can proc again, he's gotta go for a shushu. Well, actually, he doesn't have to go for Shushu. An additional turn! What, what esports, guys? Wow, guys, it's not about RNG at all. Another additional turn!
Another additional turn. I I mean, here's the thing though. Um, Tar still could win. This is just so much RNG. <laughs> does Wusa get another turn? Of course he does. No, he doesn't. Okay, that's game. That's game. Tar's Tar should win anyway. Even with all the even with all the luck sec. Oh, he's still luck sec. He's still getting extra turns. Oh my God! Do not tell me. Jeez. He's not, he's not giving up. He's going to keep going. Tars deserve to win this, though. Yeah, 3-1. That's what should have happened. Hold on, hold on. Chat is dev Chat is flying 100,000 viewers. Oh my god, I can't read anything in chat because there's so many 100,000 viewers. So much stuff going on in chat. Wow. Wow, that 100,000 viewers is really... <sighs> can't read a damn thing. That's why I, 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 I can't read anything. So I would just like to say that this is exactly what I predicted would actually happen. The people with the higher win rate would most likely continue to win. Very shocking. But that's actually good, you know. That means that it's kind of more balanced if there's a higher win rate, things continue to win instead of getting luck sacked. That's, that's actually good for the game. We already had 100,000 concurrent viewers? Are you sure? I'm legit just playing Genshin Impact while I'm watching this on the side. I'm not even not even gonna lie. I'm just playing Genshin Impact on the side. I'm actually kind of surprised that the Molly Xingzhe was picked. That's not what I would have expected from SWC. Um, it could work. It may work. It may not work. Okay, so they have to ban right now the TL9. That Diana last pick is signaling that they are banning the TL9. Yeah, and then the Xingzhe of all things gets banned. So Xingzhe is going to anytime the Oracle's turn cycle with something, Xingzhe is going to you know keep uh, keep revenging. Um, the Diana could have been a nastier a nastier ban though, or a, 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 it's potentially a nastier unit to deal with though. Does he proc? Yep. Of course he proc. There it goes. Sierra's gonna die. He has damage with the Praha, with the additional damage, especially with the defense breaks on the... Well, not, not anymore. <laughs> now that's, that's game. That's game. Look, guys, Nana is not super broken OP unbeatable. All you have to do is bring Diana. That's game. That's already over. Yeah. This is kind of what I said earlier, though, is that the Wind Monkey, you know, was the one that was banned out. But I, I was questioning whether or not that Diana was the most effective ban just because, you know, you don't ever see, you don't go on Reddit and be like, oh, this Wind Monkey uh, went crazy. You go on Reddit and you see, oh, look at the crazy amount of turns this Diana does and completely deletes, like, two of my monsters in one turn. That's what you see. So... In my mind, that would be like, oh, I should probably ban the Diana because it's insane. And, you know, I mean, not not that it went super ridiculous crazy, you know, but Diana is very strong. One small proc, one small resistance, anything game changing. Wait, 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 once in love, wait, 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 are you saying that this game is based on RNG? One small proc, one small resistance could be game changing? So you're saying it's not an eSport? He's gonna get fired. He's gonna get fired. He's gonna get fired. Clearly, he's just gonna get fired. Lots and lots and lots and lots of turn cycling. Yeah, and Taurus is a smart pick here. Artemiel. You know what? That's a good pick. Uh, good pick of Artemiel because things are just gonna keep critting. Bulwark is actually a good pick. Not uh, most people think Bulwark is a good pick against Wusa, but uh, he is. But Bulwark is also a good pick against Antares because Antares will just keep getting turns. Uh, and every time he steals a turn, he does a crit buff and an attack power buff, which keeps stacking the Bulwark with two stacks every time. So, Antares proc once, two stacks for Wolverick. Antares proc twice, four stacks for Wolverick. Antares proc a, a third time, that's full stacks on Wolverick. Without the Wusa even having to do anything. So you see the Bulwark come out, and the Bulwark actually indicates that the Antares is making it through. Bans out the Nana. So it should be interesting. I feel that the Diana will take a lot of time in human form. And the damage is going to be coming from Vertiheal and Juno skill one. And, and the Bulwark. So the Diana's just going to be stacking shields. He's going to play with it in human form a lot. I mean, no, no, not, not human form. Sorry, pony form, pony form. He's just going to keep it in pony form a lot. Instinctively, you're like, I want to go for Antares because Antares is toxic and then I want to get my Diana through. But the Antares is going to keep stacking Bulwark. So that's why you just have to be comfortable with playing with Diana in pony form for a match like this. It's just going to, Antares is just going to passively stack the Bulwark. So you kind of need Antares to... Uh, to stay around and do his thing. But you see that the the, the Dyna is just staying in human form the whole time. Rain of Stones. 
but Volvrick's still going to do his thing shortly after. Yep. Again, you would never see Dyna going to human form. He's not risking anything. You can't have a Google Play uh, eSports moment without the uh, without Antares. Antares is just, hold on, Antares is just basically the, uh, he's the poster child of Google Play. Pink Road win is not surprising. I had Pink Road moving on to the very last match. He's not being too predictable. So Xiongpeng would be strong here. Okay, he goes for the Fire Art Master. Interesting. Savannah. I was expecting a Shengpeng. Although I think Pink Lord would have been prepared for a Shengpeng. More prepared for a Shengpeng than the Fire Art Master. Actually, you know what a Water Art Master... Oh, Volantis. Volantis works too. Volantis is similar to the Water Art Master in that he will have... He has a cut-in mechanic. He's an AoE strip. So the reason that I was saying Water Art Master, I didn't know if Big V had Volantis or not. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to remember which LDs every single one of these players has, but the Water Art Master, um, when they strip, and like for example, when the Mo Long and the Tian Lang um, will do their skill twos, the Water Art Master will activate, cleanse, uh, increase attack age, and then he can come in and he can strip. Also, he has a element advantage over uh, all of Pinkroid's team. But Volantis is very similar. He will he has a cut in mechanic, and then he also has an AOE strip uh, into uh, several debuffs. That's a decent amount of damage into Oki already. See, he could just trap Mo uh, Nana in his scroll. Gets resisted. Okay. And now he goes for the AOE uh, strip and attack power break. Uh, attack power buff. <laughs> yeah, gotta get that, gotta make sure you get that attack power break on uh, on your team. He most likely will not land this. <laughs> he doesn't even he doesn't even go for it. He doesn't even go for it. He's playing a little weird. I wouldn't play it like this. I'm not sure what his specific strategy is. I'm sure he's got a reason, but I just I would be playing it a little bit differently. It's gonna be an issue, but he still can scroll scroll trap the Nana and kill something here. So can he go for the Tian Lang? Uh, Skill 2 Wusa onto the Tian Lang. I think that's actually what he does. I think he Wusa skill 2s on the Tian Lang. He's good. Skill 1 on Molong. He really doesn't. He just used skill 1 on uh, Chloe. Because it's going to be the most effective to try to to try to actually land it on her instead of a water unit. Then he goes for skill 3, of course. He's questioning whether or not he wants to go for skill 3. Yeah, I don't know why he would question whether or not to go for skill 3. Um, gets the two-turn sleep there. So all he has to do is trap Nana again and just kill, keep killing things. So this is, this is very smart what he's doing against the... And then, uh, you know, Molong's going to do less damage now with less HP. He can only do so much. That's one way to cripple Mo Long is just get him low on HP. Skill 1 should take him out. Yep, that's good. There's a lot of things that are good against the Nana. It's just um, people need to get used to using them. It's already game. I don't know what he's planning on doing. He's got a crit damage Chloe. It's already game. Honestly, the Jogun is a is a very nice pick into the, uh, to the Nana. Her passive does not activate. I mean... Oblivion also works uh, against the Nana, so... I mean, it was over, like, 30 seconds ago, though. I think Pink was just surprised that he lost. He was like, I'm, I don't know how to handle losing. Great draft, not really RNG. That's... I think it, it, I think it is actually a good draft, yeah. I think that he assumed that Jogun was gonna get banned. That's why he banned out the, uh, the Nana. Gets the lucky stun on the Fire Art Master. That would have been a very different situation. All right, goes for Wusa, skill uh, skill two, and then skill one on Diana. Oh, you know what? That's really smart. That's really smart, changing the turn cycling. I got to give him credit for that. Very, very smart. If he does skill three, that's going to proc Diana to get a turn. So let's see what happens with the Diana situation. I think that the... Oh! That was a that was a lucky stun, 25% chance. Now CR goes down now. Uh, he does have damage with the Carnal, but that's a lot of damage right there. Let it out. After Vanessa's buff, Vanessa can still revive something. So even though Vanessa is currently in a scroll, Vanessa can revive something as soon as uh, as soon as she comes back. It's not quite like the Nana. So in this situation, the Vanessa is actually going to be a little bit stronger. What is she going to hit? She's going to hit the Jogun. And gets four crits with the Molly. On fire. On fire with the Molly. I think Pink Word is great, but you got to admit that's luck. You got to admit he got lucky. He got lucky two different ways. No, no Molly passive, right? And then also, unit magically, Jogun is, uh, is not fire right now. 
Yeah, yeah, that was not. That was that was that that part was not skill. I'm not. I'm not saying that Pink Roid wouldn't have won this anyway. I'm just saying that that was a very lucky. Uh, it's a very lucky God tier Diana. It's, uh, Google Play Esports Diana. You know what I think is funny is that Mo Long will do damage based on his max HP, but kill himself in the process. And then Rusa will do damage based on his max HP, but heal his AOE, AOE heal his team in the process. That does not seem balanced. That does not seem like they're very similar skills. That does not seem like it should do completely opposite things, completely opposite side effects in that in that skill. Fire Monkey. Okay. Bend the Vertigil. Vertigil is very strong into Leo. Last match. This is very close. This is going to be an RNG match. This could be a fast match. How much uh, additional damage artifacts does Big V have? This is the question. He's got the Antares on Will, though. I wonder if the additional damage would have been the better way to go with that skill 3 on the Oki. Yeah, Pink Ward wins. Pink Ward wins. It's already it's already over. Pink Ward wins. He's going to kill something with the uh, the monkey and the Antares. It's over. Pink Ward already wins. I, I think that Big V played uh, it differently than I would have played. I would have played that uh, not quite the same. I would have gone more aggressively with Yokianos. I just I, I I I don't see this. I don't see this going in uh, Big V's favor. It's not going to be really close. No, he's saying it's going to be really close. Does not make it really close. <laughs> this is not not even not even that close. I I I I felt like Big V was going to play that differently though, more aggressively. He didn't go as aggressively as I thought. Uh, I thought he would. And also, I thought that the Nikki was going to move before the Oki. So so if Nikki moves first, uh, and then Oki did a lot of extra damage, that would have been a different situation. However, my predictions are still correct. What I said, still correct. I still thought that certain uh, players were going to uh, move on, and that was what lined up. Uh, that was what wound up happening. Not surprised at all. This is exactly what I predicted. Not necessarily those numbers, but it's exactly what I predicted. I don't think he drafts the Water Ryu. The Water Ryu and Tars is too well equipped to uh, deal with the Water Ryu. I don't see it being drafted at all. Also, I think he has uh, a game plan for each different competitor that he can potentially go up against. So, so maybe that's why we saw the Water Ryu being drafted before, but we don't see it being drafted uh, in this one against Tars. Interesting. A good pick, though. Uh, underrated unit. So Gianna's definitely making it through. Uh, Diana's getting banned. Yes. Tars almost looks like someone that doesn't have the box to be able to counter crazy LDs. He does have the box to be able to do it, so let's see what actually winds up happening here, but there's... Gianna is uh, super nerfed in this one. Gianna is basically pointless. So he, so Tars knows exactly what to do when his opponent first picks Gianna. Uh, but this is also another reason that you see so many people drafting Hey Gang with Gianna, because Hey Gang is such a strong counter to Gianna that they just draft Hey Gang Gianna together, and then uh, draft some more control stuff after that. In a situation like this. Hey, no one can connect, even in a tournament. Server's still not working. Doesn't matter. Normal gameplay, tournament gameplay, servers still don't work. We got a problem. We never gonna hit 300k. Yes, we are because Comptros will fudge the numbers every single time. Because if they don't fudge the numbers, it makes them look bad. So they will fudge the numbers every time. Comptros will fudge the numbers 100% of the time because it makes them look good. Don't worry about not getting the little rewards from getting certain viewer milestones. They will just barely have enough every effing time. This must be your first rodeo. Count to us. A spoiler alert, Com to us likes to uh, fake a lot of things. He's been dealing with them for seven and a half years. I know all the nasty stuff. A lot of the stuff is not re is not reality. A lot of perception is not reality in this game. We don't actually need 300,000 people viewing to have 300,000 viewers. Esports, though, look at this. Service still not working. Esports. League of Legends players laughing right now. They're like, is this is this what uh, is this what mobile game esports is? Servers, servers not even working. Servers backup still doesn't know what he wants to do. Oh no, servers are not up again. Servers are down again. Where are the chatters? There's not that many people actually watching, buddy. That's where the chatters are. Look at the actual. Go to the click on users in chat. There's not 10,000 users in chat. As much as I would love to see very quick matches, because I love quick matches. Even the casters don't want to see the matches. They're like, I love quick matches. I don't want to see this crap. If we're <laughs> it's not figured out. This really it's not figured out. out. Hey guys, the delay is figured out. It's not figured out though. Okay. Okay. They're like, we got to make this an extra four or five hours. 
This is what happens when you try to make a mobile game into an eSport, when it shouldn't be. Bro, Summoner Swords is the leading mobile game in like 77 countries. That is factually inaccurate by a landslide. I don't know where you got your information, but that is not accurate at all. How TF does this get more viewers than WoW? It's not. It's not real viewers. It's not genuine viewers. That's how. Because it's bots. It's not actual viewers. Are we actually back? Probably disabled his camera, so if you notice something different there, but then his camera is disabled. His camera is disabled. So there's no possible way he and like five other people could be in the same room with his camera disabled and no one can see who who else may be coming in and giving him extra advice or anything. Oh my st am I starting drama? <laughs> of course it's a TARS issue, never comp to Yeah, it couldn't possibly be a comp to us issue. A Nana Gianna combination? You mean like a Gianna? <laughs> Me in the future, please put that in the video. It's funny. I think it's funny. I don't care what you think. I thought this was ready to go. They're still talking. I thought they came back from break. I thought this was ready to go. Wow, oh, they're deleting more people's messages in chat. Comp to us doesn't like people that say honest things. They're deleting people's messages in chat. How dare you? Don't say anything that goes against comp to us. Like communism. The comp to us stands for communism. Communism to the US. I had no idea comp to us stood for communism. I'm doing human things, no need to ban my words. What did he, I don't think he even said anything. It's comp to us. They don't like people speaking out against them. It's not the first time. Trust me, I've been on the receiving end of that for years. Welcome to the club. Oh, we're back. We're actually back. And they're, they have the same units. The whole TARS being not face cam situation seems kind of shady. It could be nothing. Maybe it's not shady. It just feels something awkward, right? Because there's there's already been drama before with, uh, you know, conspiracies. Sometimes conspiracies and things like this are uh, not that far-fetched. And resist. Well, I mean, it really wouldn't have made that much of a difference anyway. I think the additional damage with the Gianna is going to be more impactful. Um, than the actual bombs, because the bombs, I mean, the, the mermaid's there anyway, so. Bombs are not going to be that, uh, that effective. Do you actually get the stun? Nobody gets an additional turn. Blue hat thing wins. Nice, welcome to SWC. The blue hat thing, is this is already game. Maybe I shouldn't call it so fast. It's going to be very painful to come back from this, but it could happen. I think that actually it might be more effective to go for the bomb on the Josephine, because you never know if Josephine's going to get like extra violent procs. But I mean, she is going to cleanse anyway, but uh, she could proc herself into a detonate before the Tetra does her thing. He could go for skill two. Yes, skill two. Yeah. Okay, so Dil Diligent won anyway. Par's not on face cam. Maybe shady, maybe not, but Diligent won anyway, so it really doesn't even matter. That was a 30 minute match that was 30 seconds. A th this is this is Summoner's War, guys. This is Countos. It's a 30 second match that lasts 30 minutes <laughs> to actually do. Oh, more people getting banned. Communism to us. More people getting banned. Okay. He's <laughs> stirring the pot. What am I making? Soup? Oh, I think he called the. Is he the one that said. He's the one that said uh, 12,500 Comptos employees, didn't he? And they deleted his messages. They deleted. He was being honest and they deleted him. They, they, they removed his messages. Thank you. Thank you, Mango Smoothie. Thank you for saying the truth, even if you get silenced. I will get sounds too. I will be. I'm already on their their doo doo list. I'm already on Kalto's doo doo list. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. So the Tian Lang Gianna actually um, kind of counters itself out based on the Tian Lang passive uh, and the Gianna skill one. So he's going for it. But the uh, the Tian Lang also counters three things on Diligent side. Antares. Okay, that's a good draft on Tar side. Actually, the question is, does Antares proc? I don't know that that's what I would have gone with. Doesn't get a turn with the Antares. Gets a counter. Does not get a turn. A lot of additional, a lot of damage through additional damage. Okay, does he actually land it? He does not, he does not get anything with that Antares. He gets no stuns. So I liked Tara's draft, but Antares didn't proc, Antares didn't proc, and then he finally gets a turn, and he doesn't get his, uh, he doesn't get anything. He doesn't CC anything. Also, the, uh, the, the more not using his skill to is smart. So you had enough speed to not get cut by the Tion line. Because if you got cut by the Tion line, which is what I assumed was going to actually happen, uh, this would have been very different. There were, there were many opportunities to CC 
Yeah, GG. Uh, th but there were many opportunities for that to get cut in by Tara's, uh, Tara's team, and it just didn't happen. Diligent has the higher win rate anyway, so I chose Diligent to move on. I'm not surprised. Just uh, that could have gone that could have gone differently if T Online did cut, um, and if Antares did cut. Pre-ban Vertigo. Pre-ban both Dragon Knights. Um, with the pre-ban of Leo, that means that they're going to be bringing out some very, very fast stuff. They're going to be bringing, bringing out the Savannah. They may be bringing out a Poseidon as well. Uh, Diligent has so much extra fun stuff that we're not even seeing. He's got a lot of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. I told you. I told you we're going to see a Savannah. I mean, when you see the Leo band out, of course, you see something. Most likely, uh, you're going to be fast, aggressive, uh, aggressive team. So that means that the Savannah is like, oh, the, I mean, that is a good pick just in general. They may ban that out. I feel like they may actually ban that out. Or maybe he feels like he doesn't need to. Because he can he can just CC that. Bans out, okay, bans out the Nana. That that could be very dangerous, leaving that uh, Fire Striker in there. Who does not land it. Okay, lands it there. Gets nothing on the Douglas. Gets the revenges on the Douglas. So Douglas is not uh, going to go for Lulu. Yep. He does not get a proc. Does he go for uh, Carnal? Attack power break on uh, Douglas. Skill 2 on... I'm not sure who's going to skill 2 on. Okay, Douglas. That's going to be his first target. He's going to go for Oki. Glancing. I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that. I would have glanced on... Um, See, that would have had a skill, too. Last season, before the patch, that would have had a skill, too. I would have gone to glancing on maybe, uh, uh, I was going to say Juno, Gianna. Because you know that's not going to, you know that that's very dangerous to try to get that glancing on Douglas. Does he land these CCs? He does land the CCs. He does have to reset the, the uh, Lulu now. Yeah. Uh, and he goes for Gianna. I would go for Gianna. He's getting extra turns that, that, that it's, it's, it's hitting him. <laughs> like, yeah, we know. We can see. We can see, Dum Dum. Uh, okay. He gets the provoke. Does he get the provoke on uh, Oki or Gany? What what is has uh, what has their cooldowns actually? Okay. He goes for skill three, of course. And he's gonna take out. He doesn't take out the Douglas, but he does absorb. He does. He does absorb enough attack age. He goes for Douglas now. Just finish him off. May as well. Uh, I don't know what else has cooldowns. I think that's GG at that point, yeah. Called that one. So, this, again, exactly down to the last two that I predicted. Down to the last two exactly as I predicted. I think you can make an argument that either one of these should win. So, I think that it favors uh, Diligent just because his box is so crazy. Uh, both of them have insane runes. Both of them have a lot of experience. Why do we need... This is... Okay, the point of this is to just show how many people are playing the game. Look at all these people. Visually, we need visual rep representation. There are more people on the screen over there than they are in Twitch chat. How do you feel? He's like, I feel like I want to win a lot of money. That's how he feels. Wow, they're having problems with the audio. <laughs> it's the see problems. Who saw that coming? But I think the biggest thing here is the win itself. What it could mean to the whole SWC esports. The biggest thing here is the win itself. Uh, there's also the hundred thousand dollars. So that's uh. That, that, that takes care of, like, half of what they spent on Summoner 4. This stream has been going on for six and a half hours. There was a total of around 25 matches that were actually played, if I recall correctly. The first rounds were all basically, like, they were almost all three and zeros. Uh, and then the second rounds was a little bit less of a clean sweep, but I think that there were, like, 25 matches in six and a half hours. Oh my god. He's struggling with the draft. A bunch of people that uh, would lose to him <laughs> if they fought him. Those are the people that say he's struggling. Yes, Pinkroyd is struggling, says all the people that, uh, that he beat. Shunpung or, uh, well, he's diligent, has plenty of LDs. He doesn't necessarily have to use a Shunpung. He's, I mean, he could use also a Charlotte, but not that he has to use a, uh, any of those. Savannah is another one. And a Leo, which means that the Leo is most likely going to get banned. And then does Verde heal Violent Rock, which means he's leaving the Verdin and he's leaving the CR in. And it looks like he's probably going to ban out the Leo. I think this is a match of does Verd Revenge. If Verd Revenge, Pinkroid uh, has the upper hand. 
No revenge. No revenge. No revenge from the bird, though. Maybe Vertiheal's not on revenge? No, this Vertiheal would be on revenge, though. It's a really nasty combination, though. With CR, Leo, Vert. Is he gonna go for, uh... Leo? No, he goes for CR. Vert. Vert counter, counters, finally. Savannah could do some nasty things here. He just concedes. That was a nasty, I mean, that was a, that could have even gotten even more in Pink Wayne's favor. But that's a lot of turn cycling between the Ciara, the, uh, the Vertiheal, and the Leo. Triple Venge is still only 45% chance to revenge. I don't know if that's, I, I think the Juno's a fantastic pick. I don't think that the Tetra is a, the best pick. He could still go Ciara. That Chow is plus 170 speed. Oh, he doesn't even go for the Chow. He doesn't even go for it. The Chow is plus 170 speed on Vaughn's the last I checked. He's got ridiculous stats. Bans the Mo Long. You know why he banned the Mo Long? Probably the leader skill. He's got the leader skill, he's got the defense. Oh, he's got a defense break with the, uh, the Nana too. But that leader skill banned out some of his stats on Pink Road's side. That's not how I would have banned, but I understand why he banned like that. I don't think he ate uh, skill threes. I think he just puts a bomb on something. And then uh, skill one's on... Tetra or something. He's gonna get some defense breaks. He's gonna get two defense breaks. One gets cleansed. Does he go for skill uh, skill two in the bird? He does go for skill two in the bird. How much does he land? Is the question. Two water units. Big stuns. Big stuns even on the Tetra. Stuns on the Tetra, stuns on the Verd. That could be a game-changing uh, stun. If that went a different way... I mean, it's RNG, is RNG. If that went a different way, then this match would have been... This would have been a very different match. He just cleanses that off as soon as Annabelle gets a turn. Oh, never mind. He doesn't cleanse it off as soon as Annabelle gets a turn. Juno. Skill 2. Skill 1, Nana. Or he's go for Juno uh, uh, anyway, okay. Because Nana already used her AoE defense break, so. Gets the stun on the Juno, but it really doesn't matter with the stun on the Juno. He gets the slow on the Juno, which is actually more impactful than the stun. Skill 1 on Juno, and then he's got skill 2. Or is he just gonna go, is he just gonna, no, he goes for skill 1, okay. I would have gone for skill 2, I would have kept the, those things alive. I would have played it differently, get that extra sustain. Because now that, that, uh, that Gianna is on very low health, and Ragdoll's on very low health, and and that that could have stacked the uh, the Nana more, so I would have played it safer, and I would have gone for the the heal. Pink Comp didn't have enough damage. I agree with what JMax said that Pinkroid's Comp didn't have enough. That he had the Tetra in there. Tetra has a low win rate overall. Usually you pick Tetra as a last uh, last ditch uh, situation when you're like you know that you are screwed and you're just hoping that Tetra is going to help you. Uh, Tetra's got a low win rate though, so it's not really, it's about someone picking more higher win rate units against someone picking a lower win rate unit though. Tetra, especially with all the additional damage artifacts and the attack age reduction, Tetra has been performing very poorly uh, as of late, so it's not surprising to see uh, like Nets LD5s beating uh, Tetra. I think Pink Warrior could have drafted something else instead of Tetra and been in a much better spot. It's so insane to see, like, the winner get $100,000 and second place get $20,000. That seems very... feels like it should be not that huge of a difference. Ashir is interesting. I, I get why the Ashir, but... Because they have that... Uh, Pink Roy's got this two-shot combination. He's He's got the speed beat, he's got the Ashir, even if the Ashir is not, uh... Yep. <laughs> not surprising. And then the speed leads get uh, get banned out from Diligent's side. Diligent's still going to... should still move turn one. And then he's just going to keep controlling. So it's really, at this point, um, it's really a matter of does he actually land his procs? Or does he land his procs? Does he actually land his uh, strip stuns? Does he land the attack age decreases? Uh, what happens here? So Diligent should win this. Should. Doesn't mean that he will, just means that he should. He's the aggressor, usually the aggressor has the uh, advantage, usually. Does he go for the non or does he go for the Ciara? He goes for the Ciara. Shung Pung is still going to, Shung Pung does have a skill 3, he only used skill 2 before, so he's going to decrease tech bars, and he's going to, he's going to go skill 1 on Juno. 
No, he does not go skill one on Juno. I thought he was going to go skill one. He's just trying to take that uh, that mold long down as fast as possible. So he actually lands all of his debuffs. Does he get these stuns? He gets this additional damage. He does some decent damage to Juno, but she does also increase attack bar. This is already game. Uh, that's not going to be enough to take out the Molong. It was close. Closer than I thought it was going to be, but he goes for uh, CR, skill two. Yep. Yeah, it's game. I mean, it was game at the very beginning in my mind, but as long as he landed those, as long as he landed the skill. If he didn't land the skills, then it would have been a very, very different story. Yeah, but the aggressor usually has a big advantage. Unless the defender has yeah. T Online Ragnar, <laughs> in which case, or or some other really, or uh, Triple Venford and actually land the Avengers, etc. etc. I think this is a very uh, this is a very good matchup though. Both of them are very very uh, very skilled, very good. Bans out the water. I don't think that the water striker is really doing enough to really be banned. I think Pinkroyd loves turn cycling so much. Okay. Loves turn cycling so much that you you kind of think about like that that's where his head has been today. Start picking some of those oracles and bird heal away from him. He could go. Diligent could start going for like a ragdoll, Diana, Gianna. I mean, he could even go wind sniper, but who knows if that's actually going to work? So this is actually Tian Lang is is not as strong against the Shengpeng as I don't think that the Tian Lang is the correct pick here. I love Tian Lang. I think he's one of the most OP units in all of World Arena, but I don't think he's the correct pick here. I think Pinkroyd is looking like he's going to take this already. And the Chi Wu. I wonder if he bans out the Wunsa. I think we're going to see a Wunsa ban, and we're going to see a Chi Wu ban. Yeah, I feel like we're just going to see a Pioneer bans. Bans Carnal. I wasn't expecting the Carnal ban. I don't think that that was the correct ban. Because now Tian Lang, uh, he cuts. He gets two. That was enough. That was enough. Uh, Shang Pung. Bomb on Shang Pung. Skill one on Poseidon. Bomb on Poseidon. I missed half this match because I forgot that something was on the stove. Genius. See, the unfortunate thing about the bomb on the uh, bomb with Nana is if the bomb kills, the Nana does not stack. Does he get these defense breaks? Let's go for Tian Lang. Yeah. He gets the stun on Tian Lang though. This is a lot closer than it really needed to be. This is a very close match. This is a lot closer than I really anticipated that it was going to be. I mean, that's game, but... Yeah, that's game. Skill 2 is done. Oh, it's not done! Jeez! That was a good last match. I mean, that was, that was close. That was close, but... This whole day has been, <laughs> this whole day has been just a lot of 3-1s, a lot of 3-1s, a lot of 3-1s. Honestly, I feel like this was the most fair SWC. The players that, again, I'm going to say the same thing I said before, the players that had the highest win rates going into the finals had the most success in the finals. So wrapping it up, let's see how we did in our predictions. We predicted based on the win rates going in, of course, because that's the logical way to predict things, unless you want to just predict for, like... This is the one. I'm friends with this guy, and that's why I'm going to pick them. We picked on just, we predicted just on win rates. So, win rates going into it. Here's, uh, here's what we predicted. We predicted Big V was, can you guys see that? We predicted uh, Big V, Pink Roy, Diligent, Tars were going to move on based on them having the higher win rates in the competition versus their competitors. They all moved on exactly as predicted, which is kind of fair, to be honest. Uh, Big V versus Pinkroid. Pinkroid moved on. Pinkroid had a higher win rate in general than uh, than Big V beforehand, right? So Pinkroid moved on. Diligent moved on versus Tars. Diligent had a higher win rate. Again, these are all based on everything was predicted based on win rates. And I gotta say that you predict things based on win rates. And then the tournament turns out that the player with the highest win rate moves on and becomes champion and everything here was actually won and lost based on previous win rates so a lot of times if you want the best chance to win something right if you want the best chance to have a prediction correct i there is rng don't get me wrong there is definitely rng violent procs can happen rng can happen um but this was less rng dependent than previous swcs that's all i'm saying is this this was less rng dependent than previous SWCs, and we predicted 100% correct on what was actually going to happen, but we just used logic and math. So it's not really surprising. It's not like we used any super uh, amazing magic and insider information. We used math. 
we predicted this exact thing that would happen. Uh, and it, ha it happened on this occasion. It happened to actually happen that way. But again, RNG could have done any number of things and messed up the predictions in any way if enough RNG happens. But uh, anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the SWC. If you actually stayed up all night to watch it like I did, Oh my god, now I've got to go edit this, uh, and then I'm going to go to bed. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you. Congratulations to Diligent, uh, and then everyone else, uh, congratulations on making it to finals. And I will see you guys, as always, in the next one.